welcome to our second class. Already we have covered review of basics, generalized Hooke's law, then strain and displacements, then differentials, transformation rules of stresses. Today we will study or I will explain that energy principles, first that principle of virtual work, second Hamilton principle and fundamental law of variational calculus. So, in the very first lecture, I have given you the relations between strain displacement relations in Cartesian coordinates, their epsilon x x, epsilon y y, epsilon z z are represented like this, del u by del x, del v by del y, w, del w by del x, where u is displacement along x direction, v is displacement along y directions and w is displacement along z directions. Then the corresponding the shear strain gamma y z, gamma z x and gamma x y. This we have to remember or these are the standard notations given in the book of solid mechanics, advanced solid mechanics. Then I have given you the relations for e equation of equilibrium, where this is the body forces. What do you mean by the body forces? They may be the gravitational forces, electromagnetic forces such that which acts over a volume. Then these are your inertia terms. So, most of the times when we are not interested in the dynamic behavior of the body, we are interested only in the static behavior, then inertial can be taken as 0 and further sometimes we are saying that body force is neglecting. So, most of the time when you see look at the equation of equilibrium, you will find this set of relations equal to 0. Then I explained that linear's generalized Hooke's law, where sigma i j is a column vector, this is we called stiffness and epsilon is also a column vector strain. So, in a matrix form it can be written as and if you are interested to find out the strain in terms of stresses, then this is denoted by S and we called it is a compliance. So, in I would like to say in explicitly we can write strain column vector can be represented this is the S matrix and stress matrix. This is valid for a an isotropic material. If we talk about orthotropic, then there will be some similarity 1, 2 and 2, 1 will be same, 1, 3 and 3, 1 will be same like that. Then for the case of isotropic materials, we can write in this form. So, in the basic solid mechanics book like advanced solid mechanics, by L S Srinath or theory of elasticity. by my M Sath. So, for case of isotropic material, even in theory of plates book also, whether it is a K Bhaskar, K Chandrasekhara, so theory of plates, their relations between stresses and strains for case of isotropic material, where delta is basically the sum of diagonal strains and it is related to g, but 
but you may be aware that we used to write aware about the material property in terms of Young's modulus, shear modulus or the Poisson's ratio. So, how to find out these compliances? So, it is a typical example for a orthotropic material if you know that Young's modulus in one direction then compliance is S11 will be 1 by Y1 or 1 by E1 if you say that Young's modulus by E1, S22 similarly. Then the shear modulus is related to S44, S55, S66 and Poisson ratio is related to S12, S13 and S23. For the isotropic material E1, E2, E3 will be just E, all shear modulus will be denoted by just G, all Poisson's ratio will be denoted by just mu. So, it looks like three constants, but actually G can be written as in, the, in like this with this relation. So, for the isotropic material we have only two independent constants. E and mu. If you give a material which is isotropic like steel or ammonium, you have to just give the value of E and mu and G can be calculated. Now, our today's topic the principle of virtual work. So, the basically principle of virtual displacement. First, I would like to state this principle and explain its basic terms. The principle of virtual displacement may be stated as if a continuous body, if you say this body A is in equilibrium under that forces, let us say this force is F and some body force is B, then the total virtual work done by all the forces through virtual displacement it will be 0. Let us say this is your virtual displacement delta u or del u. So, f into del u plus b into del u will be equal to 0 because body is in under the equilibrium. So, total work done since displacement is 0, so total virtual work done will also be 0. So, we can write. Now, we are discussing about a deformable body. In engineering mechanics, generally we talk about a rigid body. So, there only we discuss about only the external work done that uh, the forces which is acting on a body externally let us say F 1, F 2, F 3 and that uh, del u 1, del u 2, del u 3 their virtual displacement external body for if we talk about only rigid. But we are talking about a elastic body, deformable body, then it will have two component, what is internal work done and external work done. Then how can you define that external work done for a continuous system for a like a beam or a plate? It will be this is the body force into the displacement virtual displacement working over a volume. Then the traction forces it works over a boundary where traction is applied, where displacement is 0 there no need no work, but where there is traction forces are applied. So, over that boundary only for example, a boundary there may be some displacement prescribed and over this boundary stresses may be prescribed. So, the boundary where stresses may be prescribed over that traction into virtual displacement. So, that will be your external work done that traction forces over that surface area and body forces. Further in explicitly if you would like to 
write in terms of a Cartesian coordinate, then it will be f x along x direction, f y along v direction, f z along z direction. Similarly, traction along x directions, del u along y directions and along z directions. Why it is negative sign? Because work done is on the system by the external forces. Now, we are interested to find out what is the internal work done. Since there is a body and we have applied some tractions or body forces due to that inside the resisting stress system is generated. So, basically the forces applied on the deformable body causes it to deform and the body experience internal stresses and the material particle moves one point to another point. So, work done by these stresses when a inside the body the material displaces material point. So, that is work done by the system that will be positive. So, internal work done will be positive. So, virtual displacement del u del v del w. So, what will be the virtual strain? So, del epsilon x x is nothing but del u comma x del y y will be del v comma y and del epsilon z z will be del w comma z. Similarly, the shear strain del gamma x y will be del u comma y del v comma x. Now, if we say that a in a one dimensional body only sigma x x is acting means the stress generated and the displacement is along that direction is del u. Then the work done will be over this area the resultant force sigma x x d y into d z this much will be the force and the displacement the displacement will be this much if you can write in properly epsilon x x will be del u by del x. So, del u can be written as del epsilon x x del x. So, that will be equivalent to del u. So, this will be your work done under one dimensional cases. So, we can extend it to for three dimensional case. So, you have sigma x x del epsilon x x plus sigma y y del epsilon y y sigma z z del epsilon z z and work done by the shear forces, shear stresses, shear strain. So, we can remember that sigma i j del epsilon i j works over a volume. If we talk about total internal work done for a entire volume, then we can write integration volume integration up sigma i j into del epsilon i j. Now, virtual work total work done for a entire volume del w will be this will be the del w i and this is del w e external work done. Now, interesting point is that we can obtain equation of equilibrium using this virtual work done. Previously at the undergraduate levels you have already um, obtain that equation of equilibrium using the differential volume element. There are number of techniques like you have a cube and applying some forces plus, but with the help of virtual work done we can also obtain the equation of equilibrium plus the boundary conditions. This is the advantage of the energy principles. You will get a system of 
equilibrium or governing equations plus the associated boundary conditions. Whereas, in other approaches like differential volume approach or any other approach which is not based on the energy methods, you cannot find the boundary conditions, associated boundary conditions. So, we have to just own our physical interpretations that what should be the boundaries, boundary conditions, what should be the forces or displacement has to be prescribed over that boundary. But if you use that energy principle, so for that you will get equation of equilibrium as well as the boundary conditions. So, I am going to prove this. Let us say the total virtual work done will be del w by del w e and del w i or I will say that in explicitly in a large uh, bigger form due to the contribution due to the internal work done plus contribution due to the body forces and this is the contribution due to tractions over boundary. So, this is the area integral, volume integral, this is volume integral. So, this is the internal work. So, this up to you are aware. Now, this will help you to develop equation of equilibrium. Let us see. Now, displacement u which I have already explained along x axis and its variation virtual displacement will be del u variations along virtual displacement along y direction virtual displacement along z directions. Similarly, the virtual strains can be written like this. Then you substitute these strains into the internal work done instead of del epsilon x x I am representing this is del u comma x. Further del epsilon y y is replaced by del v comma y. Del epsilon z z is replaced by del w comma z. Similarly, del gamma x y is replaced by del u comma y plus del v comma x. Till this step is clear that you have to just replace virtual strain in terms of virtual displacements. Now, this term you have only idea about the virtual displacement that body we are providing a virtual displacement. We do not know no information what about the derivative of that virtual displacement whether it will be 0 or not. So, we can write this expression like sigma x x and del u. If you take the derivative along x axis it will be written that differentiation of first function second function as it is plus first function as it is differentiation of second function. So, which is this? So, this can be written as summation of this whole derivative comma x and minus of this. So, this term can be replaced with this term. This is a very, very important step and I will say that this uh, step or this process is used whenever you are going to develop a theory for a beam or a plate or a shell, we are going to use this step. In similarly, some sometimes it there may be some other entities not like this stresses or displacement may be something else, but we used to try we because we are interested to only in terms of del u, not in terms of del u comma x, not derivative in that. Similarly, we can replace this one 
this thing, this thing. So, finally, you see one contribution, first term contribution, second term contribution, then third term contribution. When it is a shear stress contribution, then we have a two displacement terms, then there will be two contribution up to the fourth of one and fourth of two, then fifth of one, fifth of two. Similarly, sixth of one, we have a six basically terms. Now, you see you have to club the coefficients of del u 1 star and this is the star marks are the coefficients of del u. So, I will say that a, a and further star del u coefficient are this a. So, we keep these things together. Similarly, we will collect the coefficient of del v which is marked hash del v and again del v similarly for del w, but what about these? So, similarly the derivative of x we will keep it together, the derivative of y and derivative of z. So, I am writing separating that coefficients of del u, coefficients of del v, coefficients of del w. You see clearly this is the first equation of equilibrium coefficients sigma x x comma x plus tau x y comma y plus tau z x comma z and these are the whole derivative of x, whole derivative of y, whole derivative of z. So, if you there is an integration derivative, so one derivative will go, so it will reduce to a area integral and this remains on the volume integral and it will reduce to area because there is a derivative kind of thing is there. So, you see again I would like to tell you, you can do explicitly also that x if you remove it will be a integral over y and z, this will be integral over x and z and this will be integration over x and y. You can use do in a more journal term which is that if any term, in term and derivative along y volume integral that can be written like this that entity into normal vector in that you may say that n i basically when it is i or if it is j it will be n j and d s surface integral. So, volume integral can be inverted into a surface integral like that quantity n j and d s over that area. So, similarly, sigma x x it will by if I go to back here sigma x x del u comma x volume integral, this can be written as sigma x x del u n x and d s whatever you want to say that over the s surface area, area integral or area integral you can say directly. Similarly, this will also have n x, n x and this n y, n y and then accordingly del u arranging together. So, this will have n x, this will have n y, this will have n z. So, in this way I have arranged the terms like this del u coefficients, del v coefficients and del w coefficients. Now, finally, one can write over the volume we have body forces and over the area or over the surface we have tractions. Next, since displacements are virtual, they are arbitrary, 
their coefficients must vanish. So, this displacements are arbitrary. Ultimately, this has to be 0. So, this it means this will be 0. It was on under the integration, but del u, del v, del w are arbitrary of this thing. So, their coefficients must vanish. So, it leads to you first equation of equilibrium. We can write it in index form like this and the associated boundary conditions. So, this term you will not find anywhere uh, if you apply a differential volume element or something it tells you that this term is equivalent to this is due to the internal stresses and this is due to the external. So, externally applied loading if that surface is free let us say if we talk about a beam and this surface is free cantilever. It means there is no stresses. So, this quantity has to be 0 internal that is why we say over this what are the quantity sigma x x has to be 0 or tau x z has to be 0. So, these things comes from there. If it is applied then we say that whatever the component of that let us see if there is axial force then we will say that sigma x x is equal to f x applied one. Now, the application of virtual work ok just one more thing I would like to say it here that right hand side are 0 there is no inertia terms. So, this principle is used whenever you are interested the static loading no dynamic case no vibration case. So, for that you can obtain the governing equations. So, I am going to explain further that how to apply this method to analyze a bending of a beam if let us say some q load is there and this axis is x, this axis is z, this you can say y, this length may be taken as l, this height. So, basically at this minus h by 2 to plus h by 2 at center 0. So, most of the undergraduate books you will not find that how to develop the equation governing equation of motion for the case of beam. They have using the strength of material approach that the bending moment and other concepts finding out the governing equations. But using the energy method using the virtual work I am going to explain how to develop set of governing equations. Basically, this is the first step or uh, if you can understand this step definitely you can able to develop a theory for the case of plate or for the shell. So, this I am going to explain the basic steps the very basic step of any theory suppose if we are talking about a Euler Bernoulli beam theory there are some assumptions that straight line transfers to the axis of a beam before deformation remains straight inextensible after the deformation. Then it is normal to the mid plane 
remains normal to the mid plane after deformation. So, basically this physical assumptions helps you to find out that there is no strain along z direction and there is no shear strain along the z direction. There is a purpose of writing epsilon z z equivalent to 0, gamma z x equivalent to 0 that we are neglecting the strain that is why this theory is valid for thin beams. We are neg because of thinness that along z direction your thickness is if you say h or you say t is very small. It does not take any shear strain or normal shear normal strain along that z direction. So, very first step we if we talk about a displacement based theory, I will come up that there are theories which are based on the stresses, there are some theories which are based on mixed displacement as well as stresses, there are theory. So, but in the literature or in the uh, structural engineering you will find 90 percent of the theories are based on the displacement base assumptions. In that we assume displacement first and based on that assumptions we solve the set of governing equations. So, you are assumed displacement for the case of Euler Bernoulli this is the neutral or mid plane displacement this is due to the curvature effect and w along y direction displacement is considered 0 because that direction y is very very negligible compared to length directions and we, we consider that beam is subjected to the transverse loading. If this same set of displacement field the one way is that based on some guessing or some based on experience or some based on experimental data, one can assume this displacement field. But as we see that in the basic assumption epsilon z z and gamma z x are 0. So, from there we can also obtain this set of relations. Let us say epsilon z z is 0, what is that epsilon z z? Del w by del z. So, if you integrate with respect to z it will be function of x and y or for the case of beam it will be a function of x only. Then for the new at the neutral axis when z is 0 w will be w naught. So, f x is nothing but w naught. So, we can write w is w naught and w naught is a function of x only. Similarly, if you take the shear strain is 0 and then equate to 0. So, from there del u by del z can be written as like this. If you integrate with respect to z, so here it will become u minus z time w comma x plus let us say some function g which will be a function of x and y or just an x is case of beam. So, finally, when at the neutral axis z is 0, u is u naught. So, u can be written as u naught minus z times del w by del x. So, that was our first step. We have either we have to assume u v w or we have to initial uh, based on some experiment or based on some experience. We now we are with that u and w is equal to w naught. We have these two displacements. The next step, second step, obtain the strains using these equations. I will say that let us say epsilon x x is del u by del x, where u is this, take differentiation with respect to x, it will be coming like this. And if you obtain epsilon y y, epsilon z z and all other strains whether you talk about shear, 
they are coming to 0. So, you have only non-zero strain is epsilon xx for the case of thin beam. So, in the third step we have to calculate internal work. Internal work then for the case of 3D body epsilon sigma ij del epsilon ij. So, now we have only non-zero is del epsilon xx, others are 0. So, we can write sigma xx del epsilon xx over the volume integral dVa. So, we can write like this. Further, there I have also told you that replace this strain in terms of displacement. So, del u, del w, so del epsilon xx is nothing but this. So, you can replace del epsilon xx is with this where u comma x is derivative with respect to x and w comma x x it means double derivative with respect to x. Now, there is a time to define the stress result. This is also a one of the very, very important step for developing the theories that you have if you do not define the stress resultant this volume integral will not convert it into a area integral or a line integral. So, along the z direction or if you have gone through any advanced courses theory of elasticity or advanced mechanics. So, if you are this is minus h by 2 to plus h by 2. So, over this stress boundaries are satisfied in terms of stress resultants. So, in the if you talk about the array stress function or any problem. So, over this surface boundaries are satisfied point wise, but over the thickness zone boundaries are satisfied like sigma x x dz minus h by 2 plus h by 2 equal to 0. That boundaries are satisfied in terms of stress resultant. So, here we are defining in plane stress resultant n x x which is nothing but sigma x x dz over that thickness. For the case of beam this area is also taken considered. So, that integration reduces to b or we can write the area integration sigma x x t z. Similarly, if you have a moment z sigma x x d z that moment resultant m x x. So, finally, this expression this integration can be reduced to a line integration 0 to l n x x del u naught comma x sigma x into z m x x del w comma x x. Here you see when I was explaining that how to find out the equation of equilibrium there was a term that del u comma x. Here we have a term n x x del u naught comma x. So, we are interested to get rid of this derivative of x you see. Okay. Then again some body forces we are considering no body forces only external. So, beam is loaded only at the top sometimes in plane also no problem. So, 0 to L q x and del w naught. So, the total work done will be due to the internal work done and due to the external work. 
So, your primary variable del u naught and del w naught. So, you are going to express n x x del w naught comma x like this. Similarly, you have m x x del w comma double x will be these terms, these three terms contribution. Means we are converting into a basic form del w naught, del w naught and that is all and external work done. Now, you have to arrange coefficients of del u naught, coefficients of del w naught. So, basically this integration 0 to x will go to the boundary. Similarly, this integration will go to the boundary. This term will go to the boundary only on line integration this and this and this will form your we can see that over a line integration and over the boundary. Now, you say that the del u naught and del w naught are virtual displacements, they are arbitrary. So, their coefficients must vanish. So, that is why you get these two set of governing equations. I think you have never encountered that doing this process, how to obtain this set of governing equations. In most of the undergraduate books, this is written directly. So, but how can we drive this set of governing equations? Suppose, your beam right now your beam is of made of steel material. Later on you say that my beam is made of functionally graded material or uh, my beam is thick or my beam is having uniform varying geometry. Then this equation does not hold this is for a special case that a beam is thin that section is not varying and only loading is transverse. So, for that case is the governing equation, but if you know that process that how to arrive this set of relations. So, you can say that ok let us say my beam is this shape or my beam is sometimes this shape I would like to drive a set of relations or I am having some uh, so resting on some elastic foundation for that case what will be the governing equation or if my beam is thick then this set of equations will change. So, we must know the journal procedure. So, that later on for a advanced material different kind of loading, different kind of geometry we can develop governing equations. Now, come to the associated boundary conditions these are the boundary conditions n x x m x x then this is the displacement. So, if we talk about a beam let us say this length is l and this x is 0 and this x is l. So, we can say that either n x x or u naught if I say this edge is fixed. What does it mean? It means at this edge u is 0. Now, what about the second combination? Moment m x x or its slope or the shear m x x derivative or the deflection. So, at the clamped as u 0 equal to 0, w 0 equal to 0 and w comma x equal to 0. So, from this we have to find it out. If this edge is my free, so all stress components what will be n x x, m x x and m x x comma x. Sometimes we call it is v x has to be 0. If we talk about the simply supported then deflection 
will be 0, but slope may be anything. So, corresponding term moment will be 0. Similarly, u can be anything. So, corresponding n x can be 0. If we talk about a hinge term, so instead of that u will be 0. So, using this principle you have obtained the choices that either n x x or u naught m x x or w naught comma x m x x comma x or w naught. So, based on that boundary condition you say if my w is 0. So, this can be anything if my w is not 0 uh, if my w is uh, I say that 0. So, this may be anything if this is not 0 this has to be 0 combination of this either n x or u naught m x or w naught comma x v x or w naught. So, this has given you the choice uh, later on for the case of thick beams or some different kind. So, there may be more number of variables not just 3 may be more number of variables. So, from there that you have to choose that for particular set of boundary conditions what of the variables has to specify over there. Now, as I have said that virtual displacement principle can be used to a static equilibrium of solid bodies or structures. If we are interested to develop dynamic version. So, I would like to say this is the extension of virtual work done to the dynamic case. So, in the dynamic case what the extra term that is the kinetic energy. A dynamic system will have kinetic energy as well as the potential energy. For example, if you take about a pendulum, so it will have a kinetic energy plus potential energy 1 degree of freedom. But if you talk about a case of a beam, and interested to find out that dynamic behavior for a continuous system, then you have to use the Hamilton principle. In this Hamilton principle, before that I would like to explain you the variation. or specifically for our whatever we are using that first variation. In virtual displacement principle we said it is a virtual displacement del u del w. So, these we called the first variation del operator del of any quantities. So, it is a variational operator. Concept is this let us say any function which is a function of a time and initially at time t 0 it has some value boundary conditions and at final position at time t is equal to f it has some value. But in between it may follow this path, this path or some other path like this. There may be some actual path which is not known to us. So, we will say that we are saying that let us say deviation from that exact path is delta first variation and we are trying to minimize that variation. So, we are going to near the exact path. So, admissible variation of del u del u ka jo variation possible hai admissible sa which satisfy the boundary conditions that on the boundaries del u is 0 or initially and final position that this del u has to be 0 for all values of x. So, that is known as first variation. Now, I am going to state the principle can be stated that of all possible path that a material particle could travel from the initial position T naught to a final position at time T f. 
its actual path will be one for which this integration this integration will be extremum i am going to write it again t1 to tf kinetic energy potential energy that this integration will be minimum if i talk about so, how did you get a minimum of that if you take the derivative and equate to 0? Similarly, we take the first variation and equate it to 0. So, ultimately the Hamilton principle gives you this statement del k minus del w i minus del w e del t equal to 0. So, what is the kinetic energy of a body? You know half m v square for a discrete body. But for a continuous system, continuous system, continuous body, it will be half volume integral rho u dot square, where u is displacement and u dot is the del u by del t, it is related to velocity. So, for the case of then if you take the variation first variation in the kinetic energy. So, it will be if you want to take that 2 times dot del u dot or first function second function. So, it will reduce this to rho u dot del u dot del v that is your final form of first variation in kinetic energy we are going to use this one. Now, like our principle of virtual work done, we have said that displacements are arbitrary. So, its coefficient must vanish, but in the case of Hamilton principle or some other variational principle we take this is the first variation. So, if we have a system like that for any integrable function, any function like it may be sigma x or it may be n x or any function, if that is integrable and this statement is there g dot n dx a to b, where n is an arbitrary continuous function eta and valid over rho a to b, then we, case, we can say that g has to be 0. So, from the integration to O d form or the a strong form. So, we have to say that if a integrable function and a arbitrary variation and integration that arbitrary variation is valid over a range a to b and this integration is equal to 0. So, we can say that g must vanish over that reason. Similarly, I am just going to help you with the example. So, in that we have obtained sigma is a comma this and this is integrable over that volume and del u is also valid for that volume. So, that is the first variation. So, we can say that this has to vanish. So, it leads to a differential equation form.